What's your take on Anantec's finding of significantly increased inter-CCD latencies for the Ryzen 9950X? Yeah, that was an interesting yeah. finding from their, their review of those parts. For yeah, sure. I've, I've got a few notes because I only just recently looked into this. I did hear about it. I think I saw it on Twitter or something like that. Uh, they were talking about it. But basically, the guys from Anantec, they're using an internal tool that they have developed for measuring this, which they have found to be very accurate. But they, they themselves aren't exactly sure what's going on here. They think the tool's accurate and the information they're getting is accurate, but they're not exactly sure why. And they've publicly said they'll be doing further testing, further mm -hmm. investigation to try and work out why they're seeing what they're seeing and if what they're seeing is indeed accurate. But for those of you not up to speed, I'll quickly explain uh, what it is that they're seeing. So this is from the 9950X review. It's so the core complex die. There's two of them on the 9950X. So this first part, we're talking about the quarter core communication within one of the dies. So that's there's eight cores in there. And generally speaking, when they communicate with one another for the 9950X, it's about a 20 nanosecond delay on average. So it's quite quick there. They're communicating via the shared L3 cache there. So that's all within the one core complex die. And with the 7950X, it was an 18 nanosecond delay. So there's like two nanosecond difference there. You'd hope that that sort of stuff would probably improve, but that's not the, the shocking finding. Uh, it's the CCD interconnect latencies that are the real problem here. So for cores of different CCDs, uh, they need to communicate across the infinity fabric out to the IO die and then to the other CCD. Mm -hmm. So there's a bit of traveling that goes on there, which is going to increase core to core latency, but it, uh, it increases it quite badly. So then the 7950X, so the previous generation 16 core model, that had a CCD to CCD latency of 76 nanoseconds. So that's a much higher than the 18 you see within a CCD, which is why if you're running a game, for example, you want the game to be running on the eight cores within a CCD and not going, oh, this core is going to go then out to this core and that kills yeah, your frame yeah. rate. So there's all that problem. But with the 9950X, it's now 180 nanoseconds. So we've gone, mm. yeah, it's, it's well, it's basically a little over double the, the time yeah, delay yeah. For, for, for core communication between CCDs. Um, you know, and Antec has speculated this could be a problem with AMD's processor power management provisioning driver, or perhaps it just is an issue with the Zen 5 architecture. So they're not sure uh, exactly what the problem is there. As for our speculation on what the problem could be, yeah, look, it could be something uh, as simple as a, a chipset driver that they, you know, the, the core is going to sleep. And because it's not an extended workload, it takes maybe 100 nanoseconds to wake the core up and then do the the pinging that they're essentially doing. So maybe that's not really representative of real world workloads. Uh, yeah, I, I, hard to it, say. It's too hard to say. Really, they need to do more testing um, and dig in and find out, A, if the results are accurate, um, and then B, like, you know, what what is the explanation for them? But we haven't really seen... Uh, I mean, I haven't dug into this too much and done a whole heap of testing, but generally we've seen gaming performance, which is pretty sensitive to core to core latency, but it's more your DRAM latency that really hurts uh, gaming mm -hmm. performance. Again, Zen 4, Zen 5, pretty similar. And even with the dual CCD models, I found performance pretty similar. And when the game wasn't scheduling correctly and it was just using calls all over the place, I saw a similar performance hit between Zen 4 and Zen 5 in terms of FPS. Again, I haven't done a whole heap of scientific testing to really confirm that, but based on when I was seeing that, it didn't look alarmingly low or anything crazy like that. So. Yeah, you'd expect when the latency is more than doubling from Zen 4 to Zen 5 that it would have a significant impact for gaming in those scenarios. Yep. And the fact that you're not seeing that... I mean, I'm not saying that that testing is inaccurate, but it might just be that in certain other workloads, the latency yep. isn't well, as high or that isn't a limiting factor for gaming is one angle as well. Again, so. I also... I'm not saying it doesn't affect gaming performance either. I'm just saying I did a little bit of testing because there was the whole core parking thing and all that issue before the yep. reviews went yep. live. So I I do a fresh install anyway and you know install the chipset drivers and do all of that. So my data from the get-go was fine. 
But when AMD sent that email, I'm like, well, I better check all of this <laughs> yeah. because I've found for gaming that the 9950X basically equals the 7950X, which was honestly to be expected based on what we've seen from the Zen, a five, uh, sorry, from the Ryzen 5 and uh, Ryzen 7 parts. So I checked it all out and then I deliberately broke performance by just taking an SSD out of an older Zen system and, you know, installing the chipset driver, but it's not a fresh install. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it behaved exactly as I would expect a 7950X to behave. So anyway, I don't really have any additional insights or theories uh, and I'm not even convinced that this is a huge problem, at least for the testing and stuff that we're interested in, but interesting nonetheless.